as known TV come right back at you again with another video uh, this is involving Detroit Lions training camp scenario or if you want to call it joint practices preferably uh, I've been hearing some good things lately about the Lions I know I've been uh, a little late with the video probably maybe maybe not uh, we know I'm hearing some good things with the team her their duelist performance still very well her that uh, that you know, basically Darius Slay has been balling out. They got two picks, if I'm correct. And you know, I'm still, you know, this has been a journey with the Lions. So we're training camp. You know, I hear that Greg Robinson is starting to settle in at left tackle. I'm not sure that he's not selling as a Pro Bowl level, but I'm quite sure he's selling in decently. And that, like I said before, my other video, we get him to play average. If he's the guy, if he's the guy coming out of preseason to start the regular season for us. If he, uh. And Lang and, uh, you know, Glasgow can be average at their guard spots, then that's fine. As long as the other two key components, uh, Wagner, who did have an injury scare this week, by the way, guys, uh, and happy to report that he and Ebron actually are back from injury uh, list now. Uh, Ebron, I believe, just did, like, some light drills or something like that. I don't think he played in the national game. He probably won't see him until, like, the next preseason game, probably the home opener. Uh, it's a possible chance, depending on how you want to do it, because that was a hamstring injury, so you want to make sure he's warmed up enough. Uh, Wagner, they didn't never disclose it, but they said it was nothing scary. Even Matthew Stafford took a little slight scare, bumping the knee with a uh, mirror doula. Yeah, it's a point where he was limping off. I think they said he had bumped knees with a mirror doula, and he did limp off for a minute, but he came back in. He was fine. Uh, yeah, back to the old line thing, man. Uh, one thing that's still scaring me, I don't know, and I hope anybody in DVE or any fan out there leaving in the comment section, what is going on with TJ Lane? We have been hearing all season that he, hey, he was healing up nicely and this and that and other. He should be back by training camp. Well, it's training camp. I barely even heard if he was even doing warm-ups on drills or nothing. I don't even know if he was doing that. I don't know what they plan is. I don't know if they're doing the... Hello, Nada with him, because that's what he sounds like. Hello, Nada right now. Like, he you know how Nada came over, had a hamstring injury over that whole offseason in 2015 when he first got traded over here. And it was like, well, he everybody should be fine. And then Hello, Nada was not the player that he was for at least the first eight games or nine games. And then, like, the end of that season, he started settling nicely. Remember, then in 2016, it was a di bit disappointment. Uh, I'm hoping that's not the same case with our O line when it comes to TJ Lane. I, I'm hoping that it's just he's a pro and they can just trust him to be off a whole training camp and maybe play. I'm not sure, maybe possibly play in a preseason game, at least the third one. He at least play in the third one because I agree with everything King when it comes to Matthew Stafford. That Stafford to me doesn't have to really play in a preseason game. Shout out to everything King. I just saw his videos earlier. Uh, I don't think I've been saying this quietly to myself. I haven't said it out loud to anybody in in particular, but I've been saying like maybe they, I don't know, maybe they don't need to play Stafford no more and just let one quarterback for now. Unless they get a third one, let one quarterback have the first half and have to, let the other one have the second half or something like that. And if they do get three, they, where they choose to sign Ka Kaepernick, which I kind of hope they do quietly, especially if they don't feel too comfortable with Rudolph. Or Brad Kaya proves that he's not ready. They feel like he's not ready. Then by the game two, they can get Kaepernick a job, maybe. <laughs> and sign him at least for a, Oh, sorry about that. At least sign him for uh, preseason reasons to see if he can make do what he do to help push the young players. At least do that. I'm fine with that. And, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't really need to play Stafford like that no more. I mean, he's been, what, he's 29 years old? How long he's been with us? He, you know, it's been three different offensive coordinators, but, I mean, I, I, I trust Stafford right now. Uh, if you do play him, it should be game three. Just, you know, because that's when the starters play. And I would like to see how he's throwing against the New England Patriots, even though it's preseason. I definitely, if we were to play him, I would like to see that. But other than that, we don't need to play him. Uh... But, yeah, back to T.J. Lane, man. I just feel like, what is going on with him, man? I, I, I'm a little bit, now, I said overall I'm concerned about the old line, but I'm really not concerned. But if I am concerned about one major thing, it's, to me, not the left guard, left tackle situation. It's the right guard with T.J. Lane. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm real concerned about this. Is he even going to be able to play properly? Is he going to have a down year now or something where he's just getting pushed around? Is this I'm just a little bit concerned on his end. 
because they're not using them. Now, I'm concerned, again, but I'm not that concerned with it, but I guess I kind of know what they're doing. If he plays the preseason, then I'm not that concerned. If he play, if it's just, oh, keep him out of training camp, he don't need to do it. This is a guy we trust on his own privacy, works out. And then, okay, he's ready for preseason, and he's looking pretty decently each game or something like that. Then, okay, fine. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's that's cool with me. But other than that, I guess I'll just wait to then. But for the most part, that's the one thing that scares me with the old line. You know what I mean? And then when I think about Tease Tabar, second-round pick out of Florida, well, <sighs> he's been having his struggles this offseason, especially in training camp. He's been getting beat from guys like, uh, Marvin Jones all the way down to Michael Rector, who was an undrafted rookie, by the way, uh, on bit downfield shots, so chasing people that, but I'm not scared because today, or recently the other day, he just actually made a, a play on T.Y. Hilton, nonetheless, that made us kind of like, oh, you wonder why I was saying, you know, it's too early and it's just training camp. And that's, he made a play that uh, would have been fumbled, but it was ruled an incomplete pass, you know. So he, it was already caught, and he roughed it out of T.Y. Hilton's hands. And it was saying it would have been fumble maybe if he took more steps or something like that. Maybe he could have, when he was forcing out, maybe it would have been a forced fumble. But, yeah, it, that's what he's been. Now, if he comes in and, and you know, in the snaps he's giving and show that ball hawk skills, you know, this is why we got him. Uh <clears throat> you know, that's all I'm saying about it. You know, he's just been having some, it's just training camp. This is why I'm glad that, you know, we're doing this joint practice. And two, that we got the Patriots coming to our area do also doing joint practice because it helps our players more than anything else because now we get to see our guys develop. And this is what I've been saying, you know, um, get these guys developed so we can start playing some games for us, man. Um, I like seeing our young players get put through the fire. That's the only way you go ever really get them to play to a high level. That's the only way they go be able to help your team out if you put them through the fire. You know what I'm saying? Again, Miles Killebrew, Ashawn Robinson, put them through fire. They'll develop nicely. Uh, even Glass got to a certain degree. So, you know what I mean? Uh, that's it. We'll see by Sunday. I thought it was Saturday, but it's Sunday around 1.30, I think, when the preseason game is coming on. We'll see ultimately what's going on with the team. At least by the first game, I saw a few of them. I ain't see. I saw a few highlights. Uh, I wasn't really all that impressed what I saw from other teams. You know, like you know, Dalvin Cook. I can tell he's explosive. You know, what I mean, good player. I can tell, but I wasn't all that impressed. A lot of people said in line, but again, it's, it's still preseason, and uh, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at there. I'm just wait to the preseason. Y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comment section, man about what y'all feel about what's going on with our team. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully we getting healthier. Just just leave it in the comment section for you, boy, man. Uh, shout out to DV, man. Shout out to King. Shout out to D Chase. Shout out to Man Beast. Uh, Ray Moore. Uh, three on three hit, man. Shout out to uh, anybody else. Ace Taker. Shout out to... Uh, uh, now I know I'm forgetting somebody, man. Uh, East Warren LB, you should know one. Hell, Gary and his buddy Cole. Shout out to CVE, Chelsea, versus everybody. Uh, this is your boy, Gnome, and uh, have a safe Friday, y'all. Uh, be easy.